Good morning, St. Paul's. So glad that you are joining us this morning and a special welcome to our visitors and guests who are joining us on this digital platform as we continue to virtually worship. Um, we join together on the chat part of YouTube in this premiere video. A nice way to just say hi and good morning and peace be with you. So I think the permission for that means that you have to log in so that we see a name pop up when you comment. So if you've got any issues, let us know. We also have a Facebook group for prayer requests and things. So please check there for all of our prayer requests and uh, different announcements. We're starting a, another book study this summer virtually, and you're invited to be a part of that. We're reading James Cone's The Cross and the Lynching Tree. Um, and of course, those of you who aren't uh, officially a member of this church, you can also pick up the book and, uh, and read some wise words about the intersection of Christianity and Black lives. There's lots of wonderful resources out there. So dig in, find something, listen to something, um, open up your hearts to receive a new word from those, uh, from those that desperately need to be heard right now. And of course we hear from Jesus also, and we hear scripture in a new way when events in the world are changing and different and uh, divisive. This gospel reading today is uh, an especially interesting one. And uh, I've got a guest preacher with me, not a guest preacher, a guest, yeah, he kind of is a preacher now since you've heard him preach. Uh, my husband's joining me for some liturgy and some prayers, so I hope you'll enjoy hearing his voice again. I think he's pretty fabulous. We'll begin with the bells, enjoy. Psalm 69, verses 7 to 18. We'll read the psalm responsibly. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me and the drunkards make songs about me. That as for me, this is my prayer to you at the time you have set, O Lord. In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire, do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me. 
neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind, and your great compassion turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said to the 12, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. 
I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up a cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Jesus commends us to take up the cross and follow him. Take up the cross and follow him. Those are hard words. It's a hard mission. It's a hard thing to follow. And what Jesus is telling us is we do it at all costs. That it is the thing that we put everything else aside for, to follow Christ. And he's even saying, there might be people in your house that you disagree with. And of course, think house a little bit more expansively. That's your family, your friends, the people that you associate with on a regular basis, your, your household. There's going to be people in your household who you do not agree with. And Jesus is wise. He knew that. He knew that we weren't going to be in 100% agreement on things. Thanks be to God that we have been given these minds to think and understand and comprehend and, and ways to gain more knowledge and understanding and empathy. And, and we're able to do all of that because that's how God created us. So that means, friends, that it's okay to um, have intense discussions that leave you kind of at a loss for words. It's okay to read things and take in things that cause you to go, oh, this is the time to engage those things. As we are still trying to figure out um, what COVID-19 is and, and maintaining that social distance as we continue to listen to our uh, Black brothers and sisters and their voices that have been suppressed for so long, as we continue to lift up those voices, the voices of scientists and epidemiologists and, and the voices of, of those who are speaking on behalf of the Black community or, or even just individually, it might cause some things in us to go, but, but, but... And what I hear Jesus saying in today's passage is, that's okay. I'm going to be with you in all of that confusion, in all of that unknown, and all of that engagement and, and argument and wrestling with things. We do that with scripture. We wrestle with scripture. We wrestle with God who might walk away and leave us with a broken hip, right? We hear that in Jacob's story. I think we've sort of, over time, made Jesus into a kumbaya, hearts and flowers hippie. And, and while Jesus was all about loving one another, Jesus also was the one who turned over tables in the temple when he was so frustrated and angry at the way people were disrespecting God's holy place. The, the, the same person who argued with his disciples and the same person who said, get behind me, Satan, to one of his closest followers when they didn't understand what Jesus was about. So friends, I don't want us to, as Christians, say, well, we just have to be like nice and sweet and kind. Because I think when, when we make that the primary function of who Jesus is, We've watered down our faith, and, and that's not what Jesus calls us to do. Not in our baptismal promises, not in the scripture today, not in the way that we are called to be present for one another. It's hard work, and Jesus knows that. 
And Jesus knows that our identity above all other identities is as a beloved child of God. You are a beloved child of God. Amongst all your other identities, that is the one that stands at the top. And from there, it gives us insight and understanding to see all the differences and, and the beautiful diversity in the rest of creation. Friends, think about if we only had one type of flower, right? Like if you just had fields and gardens and it was just one flower and one color. It would be pretty, but it'd be boring really, really fast. We were created with different skin. We were created with, with different abilities to be creative and to think and to understand. We were created with different gifts to to speak, to share, to teach, to pray. All these different ways that we are invited to be church together, God is using for the entire creation, for the entire world. Take up your cross and follow Christ. And in this time, let us engage in wonderful conversation. Let us say those things aloud that we're like, I maybe shouldn't admit this out loud, right? Let's acknowledge those things so we can start to pick them apart and, and make sense of things. That's why I love going to therapy. I can say out loud my fears and, and my therapist goes, well, have you ever thought about, and sometimes it's just a little shift in our understanding that completely opens up uh, all kinds of opportunities and, and all kinds of new ways to go forward. And I know, especially from someone who suffers from depression, that I need a way forward to get through this time of unknown and turmoil and angst. And, and yes, I'm also talking about raising a toddler. All of these ways, all of these things that are hard right now, but God is with us in the midst of hard things. God is with you here and now. God is with you. God is with all of us. Take up your cross and follow Christ. Christ leads the way for us. Christ walks beside us on this journey. And Christ supports us as we go forth to care for one another, to listen to one another's stories, and to care for all of creation. Amen.
Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, O oh God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious, victorious Lord of all through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. It's the body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Expansive God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another that differences might not overshadow our baptismal unity. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Providing God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill for too long. Direct the work of all who care for birds in their habitats. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Protecting God, 
Sustain and keep safe all who work to defend others across the world. Revive and strengthen organizations dedicated to caring for refugees and migrants while their homelands struggle for peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Loving God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. Guide all who speak your word of justice and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Compassionate God, you are with us and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers and all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith. As we give thanks for those who have died, increase our care for one another until we walk with them in newness and life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 